In the black today, Wall Street ended the week on an up note. The Dow posts a winning streak after a strong start to earnings season. Better than expected third quarter earnings reports have boosted the Dow to its best weekly performance since June. It gained more than 382 points to close at 35,294. The S&P went up to more than 33 points to finish at 44.71. And the tech-heavy Nasdaq rose almost 74 points to finish this week at 14,897. And FYI, Bitcoin has crossed the $60,000 level. A new White House report released today says climate change is posing a systemic risk to the U.S. financial system. That is according to the news website Axios. The Biden administration is now planning to consider the effects of climate change and long-term budget forecasts. Additionally, the Federal Department of Housing and Urban Development is planning on factoring climate change into federally guaranteed mortgages. Also, perhaps more importantly, the Federal Emergency Management Agency, or FEMA as it's known, is planning to revise building standards in flood zones. And overseas in China, you can no longer listen to holy books, including the Koran and the Bible, at least not on the Apple service Audible. Those religious books have disappeared from the Audible store in mainland China. Audible said today it removed the religious books from its app due to, quote, permitting requirements. This move is seen as part of China's crackdown on Internet companies. Formal segregation was outlawed many years before Mark Zuckerberg was born or anybody knew how to click on something that would be delivered to their door. But now, as we hear from BNC's Naja Sherman, the digital divide is creating two nations, one online and thriving, the other offline and suffering. Affordability is actually the biggest barrier to having internet in your home. Angela Seifer is the executive director of the National Digital Inclusion Alliance. In a rural area, their barrier might be that it physically doesn't exist. In an urban area, that's not likely to be the barrier. The, bar the biggest barrier is going to be affordability. Angela says current infrastructure plans seem to be more focused on extending the reach of broadband into remote areas of the nation, rather than making existing systems more affordable to urban students and their parents. Because we know that there are more people of color living in urban areas than rural areas, right, then you start to draw the lines between these issues. Add on top of that, that the federal government has been mostly investing in rural deployment, not broadband adoption anywhere, it means that they have investing more in communities that are of white residents than communities that are people of color. Angela says the pandemic has made the depth of the digital divide particularly painful for those who have not, as opposed to have. She says it's just not okay to sit in a parking lot to do your homework because you don't have strong Wi-Fi at home. The government has been focusing on infrastructure availability, but they need to spend more time and resources on adoption of the infrastructure infrastructure. And that means subsidies or having service costs that are lower so a family can actually afford them, um, getting a computer, because what good is an internet connection if you don't have a computer, and the digital literacy skills. Who's providing tech support? Who's helping folks figure out that next new use of technology as it keeps changing? Angela says fast internet and quick computers are more than a luxury in 2021. Right now, in our policies, it is considered something that's nice to have. In reality, it is not a nice to have. In reality, you have to have it or you cannot, you cannot survive. You certainly can't thrive today. The National Digital Inclusion Alliance says this is not a simple issue that can be solved with one expensive change. It's an ongoing process that needs to keep up with both the technology and the society as both change at the speed of what we used to call the information superhighway. For BNC, I'm Naja Sherman. To learn more about digital inclusion and make sure your voice is heard from your neighborhood all the way to Capitol Hill, you can join the National Digital Inclusion Alliance. Their website is digitalinclusion.org and it is free to become a member.